P.K. Magnetus. No, this is not another Magneta series. It's just that uh, we've got it. We got it. We got a Magneta right there that's not functioning correctly. So we're gonna break it down. But I thought I would go ahead first and show you something. Yeah, they don't come cheap nowadays. But I will tell you something that is uh, the honest gospel truth as near as I can tell it. I did buy, I bought an EK Magneta in years past at an auction sale for $1. I paid $1 for an EK Magneta. So, you know, you can find them at a reasonable price. And with that said, a little history, I guess. With that said, let's. Uh, I give you. I give you a tip that will prove to serve you well in days to come. If you're working on a Magneta EK, particular a Waco, there there is there's a couple of things on these that will give you problems to the point that the engine will not run that is so simple and so often overlooked. We'll get to that later. But the reasoning that for this is these these stands that I've got these magnetas bolted to and these are awaiting engines. Uh, the engines in progress that I'm assembling and and these are earmarked for those engines but uh, you see what I've done here is just built a small wooden enclosure to protect the magneta after rebuilding and it's just sized to the proportions where that no, no part of the magneta makes contact with the wood part and 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 these measurements, you can see this one here's an inch taller than this one. Uh, it just uh, it was the size of wood that I had, and 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 this it worked out really good. So so measurements are really not as important. But uh, this one measures out about uh, what two and three quarters that way, and and it's about eight inches total that way, seven and three quarters that way, and about nine inches tall total outside diameter uh, dimensions. This is some old pine wood. Uh, the neighbor thought it out, sawed it to fit, nailed her together, a uh, couple of three coats of rust oleum, and on the back right here, you see I inset a one inch by one eighth inch steel strap. Comes up through there, inleted it into the wood so it would be smooth. Drill two holes to match up the mounting holes on the EK and just bolted it there. Okay, that, that will protect this magneta in the correct position until I need it. The uh, paperwork right there, it's, uh, it states what I've done to that mag right there. So, and you do forget as time goes. But it's just a little uh, tip. If you've got some magnetas laying on the workbench, uh, built you a little stand there to put them on. And you can see right there, I put the, 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 the three inches wide right there is not enough to make it stable like this right here. So I did go ahead and cut these little L-shaped aluminum brackets right there. And they measure out to be about four inches wide. Put a couple of screws in there, a couple of screw holes in the bottom if you want to put them on the bench out there at the showgrounds you can put a couple of screws there then they won't get knocked over so um, it's just a little tip there on how to store an EK Magneta now let's get on to the Magneta test apparatus an upcoming project is to put a IHC logo on this panel right here. Upcoming project. Show you something. Whoa. Stop where she may. Y'all see that? It. 
Well, let's get it out. Let's get it out of this crate here, and I'll show you what it is. I, I'm going to say it's probably the ultimate. This is probably one of the best, cheapest, uh, bordering on perfect, ideal. All of those words comes into mind when I describe this EK test apparatus. Let's get it out of that crate and see what it looks like. And there it is out of the box and uh, what we've got to explain this to you uh, what, what we've got here is a th th this is a side cover the, this complete unit right here the gear and uh, this whole mechanism is the side cover off of one of those McCormick Deering M's now, now this could be uh, off, this could be a bracket, mag, EK Magneta bracket off of any brand of engines that was mounted onto a, you see what I've done, I took a piece of angle iron right there, cut it out right there to clear that gear, drilled two holes in it, mounted it on a base to go in the crate, and, and this is perfectly functional. I could un I could unbolt these two bolts right here and bolt this complete unit right on the side of a of a of a crankcase engine block and it would be ready to go. But I set this one up totally for a test stand for the EK Magnetas. It's good gear, perfectly good gear. Uh, er everything is it's good to go. It's a perfectly good backing plate. And if you have a different brand of engines that's kind of, let's say, uh, you don't have that bracket for that one, uh, uh, you know, you, you, can, you can get these right here. They're really cheap. These, these side covers right here are dirt cheap, you know. And uh, just set you up one. But the way the thing works... And you can you can mount your spark plug anywhere you would like to on this apparatus, because when this when this when this trips, the magneto fires. That's the reason that a EK mag functions so good on a low RPM engine, as compared to some of the rotary mags where you have to turn them at a minimum RPM to produce a spark. Uh, this produces a spark every time it is tripped. The solely purpose of me telling you about this is I'm going to work on that magneto right back there and, um, and and I'll put it on here to test it. I do have a couple of other magneto stands that that operates different. And I will tell you something. Let, 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 let me add something in here right here. Take notice. Take notice. Let me get something. Okay. Uh, take notice. Uh, someone was telling me the other day, this, uh, explaining to me, that they, I guess they had seen a Magneta test, EK Magneta test stand that someone had built, and they were going to build one like it. Like it. And they were explaining it to me. And I'm thinking almost immediately that is a bad idea. That's a bad idea. And, and, the, and the way they explained that thing to me is it was a flat piece of metal. And it was two, it was two pieces of metal side by side. And then it had a, a, these were flat piece of metal. And then it had a flat piece of metal in the center. And those two pieces of metal worked as a guide. For this, for this part, this part right here that you pull down, so, so that the the part that pulls down when it fitted in there, you put a pin in there, then it pulled that this bottom shoe right here, it pulled that straight down. The magneto had no opportunity to function as it would in real life. Uh, with 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 a test stand that has a forked 
mechanism for that roller to fit in then the this right here if you if you have a worn pin in there if your guide pins worn or your bushing is worn then with a with a long slot there the it, it has the opportunity to pull off at a different angle alerting you that you need to repair that but if you have the a test stand built where this can only pull straight down then this does not have an opportunity to pull sideways in real life that's the way it works so if you're going to test something you should test it exactly the way it's going to be used hence the the the, the good functionality of this test stand now to show you how the thing works is and i've just got a I've just got a, uh, a light in a spark plug war there, and it's grounded down there to one of them bolts, and that goes around. The whole thing's grounded. When you, if you build one of these, uh, one of the things that's really important is wherever it bolts together, uh, everywhere you should remove the paint from the mounting surfaces, because you this it's 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 an it's an electrical in 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 itself in its unit. The whole thing is can can ground itself uh, with that said uh, all you have to do is to turn to turn the the gear and every time that it goes around it, it would go all the way around and every time it makes it trips it would fart the spark plug okay and, and to, to know if your magnet is functioning correctly then you just you turn that can y'all see that? Can you see that spark down there? I'm not sure in the light. It can't. But but the, the the this does not have to make a complete revolution. It just has to move enough. You can backstroke it back that way and make it trip and then backstroke it. Let it reset. It does not have to. It does not have to make a full revolution if you don't want to. But as you can see, hopefully. Uh, every time it trips there is a spark produced that's the problem if I may restate that's the problem that if you trip this with a screwdriver and don't have a ground if this cannot go to ground and you trip that with a screwdriver that spark went somewhere that spark just didn't it was it, that spark was not not there it went somewhere and if you have a weak winding on your coil that's where the spark went and the more times you do that the more of the erosion of the covering you have to the point where that don't produce a spark and that's the reason it's such a bad idea to trip these with a spark plug with no with a screwdriver with no warrant because all, all, all you're confirming is that you have a little bit of magnetism right there and believe me these EKs will work with n almost no magnetism. That they, they do not have to have. Uh, they don't have to have enough magnetism to pick the engine up. It can be very weak magnets, and and still be a good magneto. But uh, uh, that's that's enough of this uh, playing. Uh, let's get on to that other magneto.